I want to welcome to the show Jason Stanley, a professor of philosophy at Yale University and the author of How Fascism Works, The Politics of Us and Them. I also want to welcome Daryl Johnson, a former senior analyst for domestic terrorism at the Department of Homeland Security. I, he's the author of Hate Land, A Long Hard Look at America's Extremist Past. I quoted from both of them extensively in the introduction to this segment. So, gentlemen, thank you both for being with us. I appreciate this important conversation. Daryl, let me just start with you. I sort of set up your background and your history and how much you've studied this, you, had a, you wrote a report it, it, so long ago. We're still struggling with this same thing. What do you believe today to be the impediment uh, against either reducing, uh, prosecuting, or, or figuring out what to deal with, how to deal with domestic violent extremism in America? Well, I tell you, when I wrote that report in 2009, I never anticipated this threat to last so long. Uh, I thought it would be kind of a two-term, uh, eight-year, 10-year uh, cycle. Uh, and here we are in year 15. Uh, I think the single most impediment uh, to solving this issue are politicians that pander to these groups and individuals and actually inflame them to radicalize and mobilize towards violence. Uh, political candidates need to understand that there's consequences uh, to their inflammatory words, their dehumanization of their opponents, and it needs to stop. There, there's a term people in your line of work use, and it's stochastic terrorism. It's the idea that um, you don't have to do it. You just have to say it, and people will pick up on this and do their own damage, which is increasingly what we see these days. Exactly. So, you know, one of the things that we can do is, you know, devote resources, watch the type of language, uh, this heated language. I mean, Domestic terrorism, one of the biggest impediments that we had as analysts is uh, navigating not only the constitutional, privacy, civil rights issues uh, with these types of groups and individuals, uh, also the interagency infighting. But the biggest thing is just these divisive, polarizing political issues that we have here, gun rights, immigration, abortion, taxes, all these types of things touch on these domestic extremist groups uh, that make calls for violence. Professor Stanley, I, you made a very interesting point uh, the other day. You say in your piece that the police department's characterization in Jacksonville of the Florida shooters manifestos, they use the words, quote, a disgusting ideology, end quote. You say that even talking about it that way incurs a risk, characterizing that, because it actually underestimates the threat that's posed by that sort of ideology. I, I, I had to read that twice to understand it. Can you tell us what you mean? Why do you take exception with the police saying that it was a disgusting ideology? Because when you look, and this is following Daryl Johnson's comments, when you look at these manifestos by, say, the Buffalo shooter, which, which we have, I pulled off the net and read it carefully, much of it sounds like what many politicians are saying today. Uh, the Buffalo killer talks about critical race theory, the dangers of critical race theory. The Buffalo uh, killer talks about uh, the uh, transgender Americans as a fundamental threat and transgender uh, uh, transgender people is suffering from mental illness. Uh, these are mainstream views. Great replacement theory, which was platformed by Tucker Carlson and is central to the anti-immigration politics of Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis, the thingification of immigrants, treating them as pawns, as objects, uh, the, uh, because you're afraid that uh, the dominant white Christian majority is going to be replaced. These are not fringe extremist views. These were once fringe extremist views. These were Nazi views. These were the views that say Anders Breivik, motivated Anders Breivik to kill over 70 people. These are now uh, completely normalized and mainstream views that ordinary Americans hold. Uh, and let's face it, these are murderous ideologies. No mm -hmm. one is bringing rifles into supermarkets because of build back better or to increase social security. So let's expand on this, Daryl. The people who attacked your report claimed in part that it was targeting conservatives for conservative beliefs. And, and you held some of those conservative beliefs in those days, but they were not racist beliefs. They were not murderous beliefs. They were not any of these things. You now identify as an independent, but when you wrote the report, you were a conservative. You were a Republican. 
why you weren't targeting yourself in this stuff. So what's how do you draw that line? Where do you draw the line between people who have mainstream conservative beliefs? Maybe you don't want overregulation of certain things. Maybe, you know, whatever the case is with this domestic, violent, right wing, white nationalist extremism. Where's the line? Yeah, so I spent 40 years of my life as a conservative Mormon. Uh, so I had no political agenda when I wrote that report. I'm a gun owner. You know, I was married, had four kids, uh, just going about my life and doing my job. So, you know, basically what's, you know, causing a lot of this uh, extremism and stuff is people continue to be, you know, fanned by these politicians and politicians are using them to get votes to win elections. Um, so that's, you know, the biggest thing we need to focus in on. Um, and also these interagency infighting that we have, these turf battles uh, between agencies. That's why we need domestic terrorism legislation. I support the legislation that delineates roles and responsibilities uh, for federal agencies. There's plenty of work to do. We shouldn't be fighting amongst ourselves on who's got what. Jason, far right extremists who carry out these attacks that we were just talking about, Buffalo or, or, or uh, Jacksonville, they're often referred to as lone wolves. Um, and some people say that term misrepresents the nature and the extent of the threat. Tell me what you think about this. Well, it's not lone wolves who are letting people die on the borders of our country. It's not lone wolves in Europe who are letting, uh, who are allowing mass drownings of immigrants. Uh, it's not lone wolves who are shipping immig immigrants from state to state uh, as if they're just like pawns in a political game. Uh, it's not lone wolves who are uh, who are doing the things that are increasingly what we're seeing uh, enabled by this rhetoric uh, by the state. It's uh, state actions uh, that that concern me uh, now most most particularly because we are seeing uh, not just in the United States but other places like India, which whose Hindu nationalism is similar to our white Christian nationalism. Uh, we're seeing this uh, this sort of uh, uh, relationship uh, between, uh, say, sheriffs uh, in the United States and uh, and these violent militias. And, and we're seeing, uh, look at January 6th, look at the relationship between the lone wolves, larger militias, uh, and if some of these politicians are successful, uh, we're going to see this uh, uh, in state-sanctioned violence against the immigrants uh, and state-sanctioned violence, frankly, against political opponents. This is a crucial conversation, and I uh, I think we're going to need more time for it. So I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to invite you both to uh, come back and continue this conversation. We've hardly touched on it, but thank you to both of you for your thoughtful work. Jason Stanley is a professor of philosophy at Yale University and the author of How Fascism Works, The Politics of Us and Them, and How Propaganda Works. Daryl Johnson is a former senior analyst for domestic terrorism at the United States Department of Homeland Security and the author of Hate Land, A Long, Hard Look at America extremist heart.